Good Saturday morning, everyone. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to go over. Um, another thing I tell you, I have very low confidence at the moment of where this front, front placement is going to be. And uh, because if this front sags a little bit further south, more people will be in possibly some, you know, wintry precip, frozen, um, freezing rain, sleet. <clears throat> now, if this uh, front is a little bit further north, those of you south of that front will just be either a cold rain, very heavy uh, cold rain. North of there will be into the freezing rain, sleet, and possibly some, some mixed in with snow at the very northern parts of this northern parts of uh, this area. Now, within this zone, this is the basically the winter battleground zone. Uh, I made this map two days ago. Still looks pretty decent. Multiple waves of low pressure with a wintry mess coming through this region. Now, uh, some of you, especially south, uh, south parts of this, southern half parts of this uh, pink area, may start out with heavy rain but as this first wave comes through it'll it'll knock down it'll bring down some of that arctic air a little bit more and uh and ooze it down a little bit further so that heavy rain and will change into freezing rain as this next wave comes in now confidence is very low on how strong these waves these these ripples basically are going to come along this uh this boundary um so some models paint a very grim picture of what could happen, and then there's one, there's a couple others that don't paint any <laughs> on here. So, no one likes to deal with ice, just a minor amount of ice will create problems, uh, especially for travel. And then, if you get to a quarter to half inch of ice, uh, that's when you start having issues with trees, power lines, um, etc. So like I said, multiple waves of low pressure with the wintry mess. Um, as these low pressures just walk right up this uh, this boundary, where this boundary sets up um, is a big question mark at the moment. But I'm going to go over some models here in just a second. Snow, ice, sleet, cold rain is a possibility in this area, okay? But I think the better chance is basically I-40... Um, Basically, from Oklahoma City through Little Rock, uh, Memphis, um, into uh, western, probably third of Tennessee and north of there, I think has a better chance of freezing rain and sleet at the moment. Now, I do think as we get closer, the cold air is going to be more entrenched more south. So, it all depends on where this Arctic eye high placement is just north of the area um, so trends have been a little bit south but the canadian model to me has been rock solid on plate on placement and uh, temperature profiles which i think it's still underdoing it but it's got a good handle on it and euro is starting to come in line so we'll see um uh, let's Get into that here in just a second. So, like I said, moderate to heavy rain, I think, is going to be along this front, maybe just a little bit north of it and south of this front. I'm going to go over rainfall amounts here in just a or precipitation amounts here in just a second. Like I said, uncertainties remain on how far this front goes, this boundary goes, how much ice, snow, sleet accumulations, who gets ice, who gets sleet, and who gets snow, or who gets all of it. So, it's going to be a real mess, and the matter of probably 10 to 20 mile difference um, in where this boundary sets up and where this uh, this uh, shallow Arctic air uh, comes down um, is going to make a difference between a cold rain and ice so um, if I if I were you I would hope you get a cold rain out of this that's all I could say all right let's go into precipitation amounts Here's precipitation amounts over the next week. Uh, you can see very heavy rain down here across southern Arkansas, eastern Texas, Louisiana, um, down here through Mississippi and Alabama. 
you're going to be mostly south of this front, but I can't guarantee that, uh, especially across northern parts of Louisiana and northern parts of Mississippi here and far northern parts of Alabama. You're still a big question mark on how far this front sags down because, like I said, if you're north of this front, you're going to cool down pretty rapidly and possibly get below freezing and have icing chances uh, coming into your forecast, okay? North of this front, especially, across, like I said, across the northern parts of the, that pink area, I think you're going to be more prone to, to freezing rain, sleet, and or snow. Uh, but the predo predominant precip type is probably going to be pr freezing rain and sleet, okay? Central Arkansas, I think you're under the gun as well. Um, you're right on that threshold, a couple degrees either way, cold rain to freezing rain or sleet. Uh, same with Memphis and north of Memphis into the western parts of Tennessee and into Kentucky as well. So you're probably thinking, how does this freezing rain happen if we're below freezing at the surface? Shouldn't it be snowing? I've got a lot of those questions. So here's a simple graphic. Basically, here, the ground, you can see where the ground is, where this green is, basically representing grass. So, even though it's not green this time of year. Anyways, so the warm air all the way down the ground, this would be above freezing, okay? So, you got above freezing all the way through the column. It starts out at snow <clears throat> and then falls through this warm air and then create changes it to rain. So, you get rain all the way down the surface. Now, this is what I was talking about. Very shallow Arctic air that comes in. The warm air rides up over it because cold air likes to sink. Warm air likes to rise, so warm air will come right up over top of it. Starts out of snow, changes to rain, and then gets the, a few thousand feet above the ground. And then uh, where that freezing layer is, and then changes it to basically freezing rain and sticks to everything on contact. Now, <clears throat> if the depth of your cold air as a little bit deeper, okay, starts out of snow, you have this uh, smaller warm uh, warm layer above the above this Arctic air, shallow Arctic air, so then it changes its terrain, but then it has time to freeze into sleep, basically, and then that's how you get that. Now, when you don't have a warm layer coming up over this cold, then you have straight snow from cloud to ground. All right, now we're going to go to Weather Prediction Center, probabilistic winter precip. This is for freezing rain. This is starting Monday night into Tuesday. This is not going out past Wednesday, going out to Wednesday. Um, so this is basically Monday evening through uh, Tuesday uh, around 10, 11 o'clock, basically midday on Tuesday. So um, you have, this is a chance of getting greater greater than greater or equal to 0 0.01 it's be one one hundredth of an inch of ice okay lot I, I mean we have chances all the way down through Texas through Austin Texas down through northern parts of Louisiana like I said it all the de all depends on where this front ends up all depends because if you're not like I said if you're north of this front you're gonna get below freezing pretty quickly at the surface and have more opportunities for freezing rain. Now, as of right now, it's just uh, the the best chances are just north of Dallas. Let's zoom in here so we can we can see some of the towns here. We got Midland, basically Midland, Odessa, over towards Abilene, and uh, and this blue basically Denton, Wichita Falls. We get up towards Oklahoma. We got Durant, McAllister. You know, just uh, south uh, east of Oklahoma City, Duncan. You get up here towards Muskogee. You get up towards Fort Smith, Fayetteville, Salem Springs, Rogers, and then up through the Ozarks, and then just North Little Rock or Little Rock. You're in a forty to fifty percent chance of at least having uh, one one hundredth of an inch of ice, and it doesn't take much to create this very thin sheet of ice across the surface of walk, any walking surfaces or um, roads or untreated roads and then trees, etc. Anything exposed <clears throat> will create 
a small thin of ice, like I said, 0.01, one one hundredth of an inch, will create some walking problems and some icy patches. So you need to be careful out there. So this is all the way through northern and central Arkansas. We've got Conway, Russellville, Batesville, up to Mountain Home and Harrison, um, where this darker... Um, like teal colors, that's a 70 to 80 percent chance. Up through Jonesboro, Boot Hill, Missouri, just southeast of Poplar Bluff, they're still in the in the upper uh, above 50 percent area. Memphis, 50 to 60 percent chance. Uh, you get up here towards uh, Dyersburg, you know you're looking at a 60 to 70. Jackson, Miss Jackson. Um, Tennessee, you got you're going all the way over here towards Nashville and north northwestern parts of Nashville, up to Clarksville, up to Kentucky, Hopkinsville, and Paducah. Okay, so those are all the areas that could get at least greater or equal to one one hundredth of an inch of ice. Okay, so you see these chances. Chances are less as you go south, but not zero because we still have uncertainties of where this front is going to end up. Now, let's go to greater greater equal to a tenth of an inch of ice. All right, so you got basically through Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, through northern and central Arkansas, uh, and then eastern, northeastern Arkansas, Boot Hill, Missouri, up towards northwestern parts of Tennessee and far western Kentucky of at least a tenth of an inch of ice. Okay, now this placement was gonna is gonna change. Okay, I'm just showing you probabilities. Okay, I think this this area we all know models do not handle Arctic air very well at all. I think the Canadian and the Euro is is Canadian has been rock solid. The Euro is starting to come more south within time. The GFS I think is out to lunch at the moment. So. Here we are. Like I said, this is for Monday night into Tuesday. This has nothing to do with the later systems in Tuesday night into Wednesday and Wednesday night, possibly into Thursday, uh, with more rounds coming. Now, um, like I said, this is just one wave of precipitation. There's going to be multiple waves. So the next wave after this possibly could come even further south. All right? This wave could even come further south as... Trends come more south with this cold air, okay? So there's the there's a tenth of an inch or greater. Basically, the dark green areas are a 30 to 40% chance of seeing at least or equal to a tenth of an inch. All right, I want to show you this first uh, before we go to the next map. This is the NWS warning criteria for freezing rain. So anywhere in this dark blue... A quarter inch of freezing rain or higher will result in a warning, a winter storm warning criteria. Okay. Um, if it gets towards south, uh, southern Texas, this lighter blue, uh, basically a, a tenth to a tenth of an inch or higher will result in a winter storm warning criteria. Okay. So I want to show you that before I show you this next map. Okay. This is just for freezing rain. This is not snow. Anything else? Freezing rain, probability of exceeding a winter storm warning criteria, which all these areas will be a quarter of an inch or higher, okay, to exceed a warning criteria. Now, you see these light blue areas. There's, there's some blotches over here towards um, just northwest of Austin, around Dallas, uh, just north of Red River here in, in uh, Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma get towards Arkansas, you get through um, central Arkansas here, you got Little Rock, anywhere in the blue, 10 to 30% chance of exceeding war warning criteria. That is a quarter inch or higher. Remember, a quarter inch or higher, you start getting some issues um, with maybe some weaker power lines, um, maybe some weaker tree limbs, the roads, walking surfaces, anything. Okay, so, and then... This goes all the way up towards uh, northern Arkansas, 
Northeast Arkansas, Jonesboro, basically Little Rock to Jonesboro, Memphis, you're in a 10 to 30% chance of exceeding warning criteria. This is going through all of northwestern parts of Tennessee, just west of Nashville, southwestern parts of Kentucky. You get to these yellow blotches up here towards Jonesboro, Batesville, um, down here northwest of Searcy. Uh, you have a 30 to 50% chance of exceeding warning criteria. This is as of Saturday, the 28th. I expect these, these, uh, this will change uh, in time, and I will keep having videos for you, but I want to show you uh, the latest information. So I want to go over the euro real quick. I'm going to show you temperatures. You can see uh, this is Sunday at around 9 o'clock in the morning. You can see where this front's at. Uh, this Arctic boundary basically riding up through <clears throat> uh, through uh, parts of Texas, already sweeping through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, most Oklahoma into northern Arkansas now. You get just north of this front. It drops off very rapidly into the 20s, teens. Then you get up here towards the northern plains. It's uh, upwards of 10 to 20 below zero. This is air temperatures, not wind chills. Okay. Then as we go forward... As we go forward, we go to um, later that evening, fronts all the way down through southern or central Texas, uh, approaching central Arkansas. It's being hung up, of course, by the Ozarks, so it tries, this Arctic air will try to bleed around the Ozarks and come down the delta regions of, of eastern Arkansas through the Mississippi River Valley, through Tennessee as well. So, like I said, models always underdo that, or, overdue temperatures when actually when all, all actuality when we get to the event it will actually be a lot colder across parts of these areas okay so because cold air likes to ooze through the Arkansas River Valley and then go around the Ozarks and try to come down the Delta or then come down around into Texas as well so and then it'll slowly ooze um, based on south, like a south southwest down through eastern Arkansas, so that's something to keep in mind as well, especially across western Tennessee and northwestern parts of Mississippi as well. Now we get into early Monday morning. You can see where that front's at. It's clear down here across uh, Texas, uh, northern parts of uh, Louisiana, through central Mississippi. Um, then through uh, Central Tennessee and Kentucky, okay? North of that front, I think these these temperatures, especially across Central Arkansas, are not correct. I think they're going to be lower than this. I think they're going to be lower across Memphis as well, Memphis area. And then you got, you know, you got freezing. You got below freezing up here towards Northern Arkansas and then get, get very cold as you get up towards the I-44 corridor through Oklahoma, mid 20s basically to lower 20s as you go to st st louis teens then single digits up here in iowa nebraska uh very very cold 10 to 20 below zero up here then let's go forward to to the next day i believe this is tuesday morning See where that front's at, all the way down towards uh, South Central Texas, through Central Louisiana now, through uh, uh, South, basically South Central uh, Mississippi, Alabama, um, getting into northwestern parts of Georgia, and and, and uh, eastern parts of Tennessee. You can see where these below freezing below, uh, below freezing temps are almost all the way down to Little Rock. Like I said, I think these temperatures are overdone. You just got to watch trends, especially across central Arkansas, through north, what, or eastern part or western parts of Tennessee, uh, northwestern parts of Ten or Mississippi. I think these, like I said, I think these temperatures are overdone. And the cold air will bleed down the Delta regions and into the Mississippi Valley and create colder conditions that's just from experience okay we've dealt with this last couple years last year was the same scenario 
we had a couple models saying it's going to be 40s and 50s and then on you know one or two models saying it's going to be below freezing um so and then it ended up happening we had a huge ice storm across uh you know northern uh, memphis north of there as well power was out for days um so gotta use your experience gotta use analog gears gotta you know if you deal with these systems all the time you know where this cold air is going to come around and kind of drain down into um to try to finalize a forecast okay so i just want to show you temps show you where this front's going to end up and let's go all the way out towards uh wednesday and see where that front is it's i mean that that warm air is still trying to press so it's gonna like i said this warm air is gonna override this cooler air uh, this cold uh, arctic air and create some problems across the area these uh these temperatures up here are just too close to call i mean for uh freezing rain that's just way too close with a lot of precip around and nine times i actually i almost want to say nine 9.9 .9 out of 10 times uh mo models are overdoing uh this this uh these temperatures okay they'll end up trending a lot colder than this uh i almost want to say 10 out of 10 times but um there's always that one or two percent chance of it not but 9.9 .9 times out of 10 models will bust on temperatures okay especially with all this arctic air up here um in the northern plains and the great lakes and then you might have some you're gonna have some northeast winds coming into the area it's gonna be draining that cold air down you're gonna be colder than what this model represents this is just one model okay so this is this weekend you got some freezing rain snow going through iowa uh freezing rain possibly into uh freezing rain sleet into missouri uh into illinois and then this gets out of here and then here comes the next system into texas so again freezing rain and sleet breaking out in, in texas uh oklahoma um possibly a tiny ribbon of snow up here in southern missouri but changes the sleet and freezing rain pretty rapidly um like i said this will this this is going to change a billion a million billion times between now and monday night so before this event hits we are thrilled three to four days away lots going to change and i expect models to come colder as we get cold as we get closer okay so this is just the this is just the newest information this is not set in stone at all like i said this is low confidence forecast as of right now there i do believe somewhere in the area is going to have freezing rain and sleet it's just we got to figure out where that front ends up and how far cold how far south is arctic this low level arctic air comes okay so as of right now we got freezing rain northeastern arkansas through uh western parts of T tennessee western parts of kentucky boot hill missouri down through oklahoma and to uh texas and then this is uh tuesday morning nine o'clock this first wave kind of dies down and see this is what i'm saying we've got a high pressure here up here towards uh uh, towards Illinois said so you're gonna have northeast winds coming down through these through Indiana Kentucky into right into northeastern Arkansas so that's what I'm saying this Arctic air is going to drain in because it doesn't have these mountains to go around all right and then you got the there's cold Arctic air down here through the plains it's going to come straight south there's nothing to stop it uh, basically except the southeastern ridge and this warm air trying to push back um, so here comes the next wave of precip heavy freezing rain through southern southern oklahoma into texas and then this gets up towards uh, arkansas as we get towards wednesday this is just the um, this is as far out as the euro goes for the 60 but this is brand new information now here's sleet totals through wednesday or late tuesday evening um, I expect this stuff to, to come slowly south as we go forward. We get, like I said, we're still three to four days away from a lot of this stuff even happening. So I think 
like I said, if models trend colder, this sleet will come further, a little bit further south, and the freezing rain will come further south as well. Now, this is just one model, so don't take these, don't take this literally like this is actually going to happen, okay? But this shows the placement on this model where this where this cold air is, and it has a good idea. I just don't think it's cold enough. See where it's draining this uh, freezing rain down through the delta regions of Arkansas into the river valley here. Got freezing rain. You got almost a quarter inch of ice in Memphis, just north of there. Uh, this model saying uh, four tenths of an inch. Um, that's going to create some problems if this happens. And like I've said, if you live in these areas, you need to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. You need to prepare for an ice storm. If, if it doesn't happen, thank your lucky stars, okay? Um, we all know we in the south here, we've been through so many ice storms. We know we should know how to prepare for it. Um, so this is your chance this weekend to do that, okay? Back here in, the cent in Oklahoma. Quarter to half inch. Uh, a lot of places out here according to this one model. Like I said, this is going to change a million times. Please heed my warning on that. This will change a million times between now and Monday night. But in Texas, this, this like I said, this as soon as you get across that front, 20, 30 miles after that front, north of it, you get into freeze the rain pretty quick. And it could be heavy freezing rain. We've got... A quarter to three quarters of an inch of ice accumulations across uh, across Texas here. Um, if trends hold, I fully expect winter storm watches to go out through parts of the parts of this area and possibly in Arkansas and Tennessee as well. Um, just if trends hold, but I expect the colder air to win a little bit more and come further south. We've seen this happen time and time and time again. Like I said, we're still three to four days out, so a lot can change. I can't stress that enough. A lot is going to change. Run through the Canadian real quick. Let's just show you what it looks like. And here's this weekend system. Here comes the next wave. This is Monday night, Monday afternoon, Monday af Monday evening. Uh, freezing rain, sleep breaking out across southern uh, Miss, or, uh, Missouri, northern Arkansas, western Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma possibly into Texas, uh, Dallas. And then this goes towards eastern Arkansas. Really lots of freezing rain breaking out, possibly into northwestern parts of Mississippi through western Tennessee. Sleet, on, sleet possibly mixed with a few snowflakes on the northern side of this uh, through far southern Missouri, southeastern Missouri, uh, Illinois, into Kentucky. And then this freezing rain gets all the way to Nashville and northwest parts of Mississippi, eastern Arkansas, east central Arkansas. Um, I think it's underdoing it right here across central. Um, as this cold air and these northeast winds drain this cold air down. Um, and then here comes the next system behind that. Here this comes up. Heavy freezing rain through Dallas. Um, southeastern Arkansas through through uh, northern Mississippi and then here comes the next wave after that okay so there's gonna be wave after wave after wave of moisture riding over this uh, shallow Arctic air so you're, there's gonna be some places get numerous rounds of wintry precip freezing rain sleet's gonna be predominant okay if you see your apps, you'll probably see snow on them, and they are not accurate. That's computer generated. It will not show you details on freezing rain or sleet. Okay. This is Monday evening. You can already see how much colder the the Canadian is versus the Euro. The Euro is coming a little bit more in line, but the Euro, the Canadian, I would want to say last year was pretty solid on where this low-level Arctic air was going. It was still underdone, but it had a great idea versus the rest of the model. So that's why I'm leaning towards the temperature-wise on the on the Canadian uh, more, okay? So you can see this has Dallas area below freezing, possibly in the upper 20s 
with freezing rain, okay? Uh, Euro had it in the mid-30s to upper 30s uh, for Monday evening. You can see where, uh, where it's where it's below freezing up here through northern Arkansas. You can see where the cold air is starting to drain down right here through, through the Boot Hill, Missouri, and it's going to be draining down the Mississippi River Valley here and into the Delta regions. You're already below freezing into the 20s up here in the Boot Hill. Okay, so as we go forward, we go to Tuesday morning. Look at this. You're down to 30 in Russellville, 32 Little Rock, 25 in Dallas, if this model came true, but I think it's got a better handle of where this low-level Arctic air is going to be. Um, you get up to our Springfield, Missouri. It's going to be 8 degrees for a low on Tuesday morning. Single digits across northern parts of um, Oklahoma. You get up towards Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Illinois. It's going to be 10 to 15 below zero, possibly 20 below zero. This is not wind chills, people, uh, at all. It's not wind chills. Nashville, 30 degrees, 25 towards uh, towards uh, western parts of uh, Tennessee. Get towards uh, Memphis. It's got you in the mid-20s, okay? Big difference between this model and the Euro. The Euro's got you in the upper 30s, okay? And 19 across the boot hill here, 21 uh, Mountain Home, 17 Harris, or 17 in Branson, 16 in Fayetteville, 32 um, in Little Rock. And you get uh, towards southeastern Arkansas, 32. Far northwestern Mississippi, you are below freezing. 28 here uh, and 32 towards uh, towards west central parts of Mississippi. You get towards Monroe, you're getting colder. You're just not, not cold enough yet. Uh, but we have three to four days uh, out um, to see what actually is going to happen. It's got you 39 on Tuesday morning, and you can see where that front is. It's actually all the way to the Gulf Coast in Texas and through central uh, Louisiana, south central parts of Mississippi, through central Alabama, and parts of Georgia. Okay. Now, as we get into Wednesday, as that first system comes through and another system comes in, look at how much colder it is. 26 in Little Rock, 25, mid-20s in Memphis, teens across northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, into Oklahoma, 20s, actually below freezing, basically all the way down to the, to the uh, Rio Grande here in uh, western Texas, uh, through basically in Austin to... Uh, through north, uh, through Dallas, northeast Texas, you're below freezing, right around 32-ish. Fort Smith, 26. Uh, Tulsa, 17. You got, and then you get down towards uh, Monroe, Louisiana. You are below freezing now at 30. Okay, with possibly some freezing rain. So if you go with this model, um, like I said, very low confidence of front placement at this moment. How far south is cold air? Is low confidence, but I have a like I said, I've been having a sneaking suspicion, especially with past past events, where this cold air is going to come around the Ozarks and funnel down on northeast winds through the Mississippi River Valley and come right down through uh, western Mississippi into possibly northeastern parts of of Louisiana and eastern Arkansas. Okay. It oozes down basically around the Ozarks, so I think I think this model has uh, has a better handle on the on the low level Arctic air, uh, but I don't think it has a great placement on pre sip. So so there we have it. So that's the latest uh, latest guidance uh, models for you, showing you the trends. And uh, like I said, very low confidence right now of where this actual placement of the freezing rain is going to be. But confidence is high. The first wave, um, it's going to be through parts of Texas into southern Oklahoma, through northern and central Arkansas, into, ten into western Tennessee with this first round. Confidence is going up on that. 
But as we go forward, I think that, like I said, I think the cold air is gonna it's gonna win out and it's gonna slowly drift south as we go forward. But we're gonna have multiple waves of precip most of next week, starting Monday evening, Monday afternoon, and then going all the way through Thursday, possibly into Friday as well. All right, here is basically the bottom line. All depends where this front front actually ends up and how far south this freezing rain gets. Uh, but winter battle zone, this is the battleground zone uh, for next week. Moderate or uh, multiple waves of low pressure with a wintry mess, basically. Snow possibly mixed with sleet in the very far northern parts of, of uh, this uh, pink area. I think sleet and freezing rain will be the predominant um, precip types um, in, in this area. But it all depends on where this front, especially the southern half of this area, where this front ends up will dictate whether you just get a cold, heavy rain or you get freezing rain. Okay, so like I said, moderate to heavy rain along and south of this front, multi like one to two, three inches of rain is possible. Uncertain, like I said, uncertainties remain on how far south this front goes and how much ice, snow, sleet, snow, sleet accumulations. Um, happen and who gets ice, who gets sleet, and who gets snow. Uh, I think snow is basically the low end of the of the of the scale here. Ice and sleet is going to be more predominant across the area. Okay. Who gets heavy rain? Who gets a cold? Basically, a cold heavy rain. Who gets who gets freezing rain? Who gets sleet? Um, that's that's a big question that's got to be answered, but the confidence is increasing on this first wave, basically from uh, west central Texas going up towards southern, southern Oklahoma through northern half of Arkansas through basically Memphis and north and possibly over towards just west of the Nashville area and southern Missouri are under the gun and, and western Kentucky is under the gun for some freezing rain and sleet as we go um, with this first wave Monday night into Tuesday. So there's the latest information. I will keep you guys updated. I appreciate you guys. Now's the time to prepare uh, for a possible ice storm in some of these areas, okay? With all the details I just went over, better to be be overly prepared and nothing happen than, be, than, have, than have no preparedness, and then you get a major, major ice storm through here and you're out of power for days. You do not want to be caught off guard. Always be prepared for weather because it always throws curveballs at you. Have a great Saturday. We will talk to you probably later tonight or tomorrow.